Planning an Indian or a South Asian wedding is really, really hard. My name is Bunam and I am the founder of South Asian wedding blog and wedding planning service, The Maharani Diaries. Before I begin, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you love it. Hit the bell to be notified if you want to see more videos on this channel. And let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this particular topic. Okay, so let's get straight into it. You're engaged. Congrats. As a former bride, I know how hard it is to plan a wedding. To begin with, you feel so much joy and elation and then the real stress starts to kick in. My advice is to enjoy your engagement for as long as you can and then get stuck into the nitty gritty of wedding planning. So whether you hire a wedding planner or a wedding coordinator, it's entirely up to you. A planner will take away all the stress and the guessing for you by pretty much doing everything from the beginning right through to the end of your wedding. A coordinator operates a little bit differently and sort of comes into the picture in a more limited role. A coordinator will guide you in the weeks leading up to your wedding and also on the day they'll help you with your vendor and your supplier lists and also keep track of things usually two to three months out from your wedding. Both the wedding planner and a coordinator can save you time. The planner that I have come up with basically breaks down your wedding over 12 months. Realistically speaking though, an Indian or a South Asian or any wedding for that matter can usually take more than 12 months of planning. This depends on a few things, including venue availability and the scale and size of your wedding. But I hope that the timeline and wedding checklist that I have created for you can guide you and give you the kickstart that you need today. It will not only save you time, but it will become your go-to guide when it comes to planning your wedding over a 12 month period. Speaking of which, that checklist is in the description below, so don't forget to grab it at the end of this video. To simplify things, I like to begin with the top five tasks, and these are defining your vision, setting a budget, making a guest list, setting a date, and picking your venue. So let's begin with defining your wedding vision. Your wedding vision is basically your theme. Think of your wedding vision as a beautiful Pinterest board full of ideas and images that reflect you. It's a great, fun and relatively easy exercise to do, so get started on this straight away. Firstly, choose the best words that describe your personality and style. It could be alternative, vintage, rustic or even modern. These descriptive words can help you define the overall vision of your wedding. As mentioned, you can turn to Pinterest to get those creative juices flowing. Secondly, think about the venue and the location. Is your wedding going to be intimate or grand? Colours could also be a deciding factor here. So you can turn to websites such as Pantone, again Pinterest, and uh, there are so many different types of mood boards available on Pinterest. You just type in mood board and loads of color palettes and choices will come up for you in the search engine. Last but not least, the all important priorities. What are the three things that you just have to have at your wedding? Is it the quality food, that signature cocktail, beautiful flower arrangements and decor, or is it the modern type of stationery that you choose? Perhaps one of you wants a champagne tower or a live musician like a violinist or a pianist. Next is setting a budget. I agree, setting a budget is such a draining task. Without setting a budget though, you can't go any further with your wedding planning. How much are you going to spend and how much are you going to put aside for every aspect of your wedding? The average Aussie wedding in Australia is around 65k, which is just for one day. Be mindful of the fact that your wedding 
will probably run over a few days. So it's important to break down every single day and event. Something that brides and grooms don't do is break down the cost of the pre-wedding events as well as the post-wedding events. Your outfits, your pre-wedding cocktail parties, your bridal shower, all of this should fall under your budget. Gather all of this information, insert it into a spreadsheet, and then you can share this with your vendors, for instance, your wedding planner, and they're gonna love you for this. It makes the job so much easier for your vendors and yourself if you are prepared with a breakdown of your budget. Okay, so the next step is the guest list. Creating a wedding guest list is another frustrating task, I know. The guest list usually depends on a number of questions that you need to answer for yourself. The first question is, which we just covered before, is what is your budget? And who do you want to invite? So if you have a rough figure in mind based on the type of venue that you are choosing for each of your events, then it makes this task a whole lot easier and less challenging for you. The best approach to begin with is to split up the numbers with your families. So say supposing you have a 200 guest limit, you and your partner can choose to invite 100 of your closest friends and colleagues and then between each set of parents that leaves 50-50. Also create an A list and a B list with the B list being your maybe guest list. Send out your save the dates. At this point, digital invites makes more sense. And then this gives you an idea as those numbers start coming in, you can gauge how many people will be probably coming to your wedding. Next step on the checklist is setting a wedding date. Depending on how traditional your background is, then setting the wedding date can be quite symbolic. The important thing to keep in mind here is special occasions, major events, and any festivals. You wanna also ensure that there's no conflicting dates with other family members' weddings or events. The season, the days of the week, all of this plays a big role and factor when it comes to choosing the wedding date. Winter months could generally be a lot more cheaper as well as weekdays too. Venue selection. Here in Australia, we know how tricky it is to find a venue that can be accommodating for our type of weddings, especially when it comes to things like the catering and the fire ceremony. There are also a number of venues, in particular here in Sydney, that book out two years in advance. So you will need to get in fairly quick. Bear in mind that it won't just be one venue. Unless you wanna have all your festivities at the one venue, in that case, it makes the process a lot easier. You will though probably have multiple events. And so picking places and venues that have enough room is a good idea. The alternative also is to host some of the events at your home. This can obviously be a little bit more intimate and that way you can adjust your invitation lists accordingly. If you found these wedding planning checklist tips super helpful, then I'm inviting you to download my free wedding planning checklist. That's right, free. It's in the description below. Tell me what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you love it. Hit the bell to be notified every time I publish a video. I look forward to catching you again next time. Bye for now.